Hello everybody, I wanted to do a reaction video to the Northwestern Loss reaction video because everybody loves a reaction to the reaction. First of all, this thing got way bigger than I ever thought it would. I guess I got mentioned on Jim Rome, Outkick360, and Barstool tweeted it, put it up on their website. And that's what you get for being a profane guy in your bathroom. I wanted to thank everybody for the comments. I don't have time to respond to them individually, so I thought I'd do this video because uh, these are easier for me than writing these days. Uh, there were a number of people who stated uh, that I shouldn't get so upset, that I needed to keep my life in perspective, that I shouldn't get upset about a game and be so angry. And I guess to that I say, you know, everybody has stuff they, they should be passionate about. I mean, if you want to be passionate about collecting Barbie dolls, I got nothing against it. I used to grow hot peppers and be passionate about that. And Nebraska football. And my emotions have always been kind of closer to the surface than most people, but the brain injury I have has made that much worse. So for the person who said, dude, if you're a grown man who is not a player crying during football game, check priorities. You know, I, I watched this game. I got extremely stressed out by it. I got a very bad headache, and I got very fatigued, which is common for TBI, traumatic brain injury survivors. Neuro fatigue is a really difficult thing. And you might say, well, you should have stopped watching it. Well, that wouldn't have helped, because I would have walked away and wondered if Scott Frost's team would have made a miraculous comeback. And we have never done that under Scott Frost, so uh, I would have missed out. And I have FOMO, fear of missing out, and it's much stronger than actually sitting there. So I cried, and that let me relieve some stress, because you can do that. But uh, let's see. Uh, a lot of people mentioned going back to the Big 12, the Texas recruiting base. This is a common thing that gets repeated over and over by national pundits sometimes, and they're completely full of shit. Uh, Nebraska didn't lose their recruiting base Maybe we don't recruit just as many players from Texas, but we don't have a problem with recruiting. We have out-recruited the Big Ten West for the past decade. And I'll, link, I'll put a link to a USA article that shows the rankings in the show notes. But we're getting good players. We're not developing them because we don't have a coaching staff that does that. And we, I mean, Cam Jurgens might be the outlier, but other than that, Mike Riley, whatever, whoever, the last 10 years of the coaches hasn't developed players. And that's kind of the problem with Nebraska football's failure. There's this constant, uh, you know, theme out there about Nebraskans living in the 90s and you should accept the fact that you'll never be good again. And you, blah, blah, blah. you know, I don't know any Nebraska fans who live in the 90s. Stuff, films come out about the 90s, and when media talks about stuff, they talk about the 90s, and people repeat this stuff, but it's normally not Nebraska fans that are bringing this up. It's everybody else. And I think Nebraska fans have a healthy regard for where we're at, as in a lot of them would have just liked to make a bowl. And that would have been good progress, kind of, two years ago. Not now. Now it's kind of like, uh, you know, try to win the Big Ten West. I think that we should always strive to win a championship. I don't understand why anybody anywhere, regardless of circumstance, no matter what you're doing, not even football, should be trying to be the best they can be in whatever they're doing. That's just odd to me. It, it really is. So when you say the 90s are never coming back, yeah, they're never coming back until we hire the right coaching staff and the right staff to go along with them. Nutritionists, psychologists, strength and conditioning. Everything has to align. Otherwise, you don't get championships. And I don't think we should ever stop striving for that. Okay, uh, Paul Peterson said, let this get this straight. The defense ran over us. They're got ran over the entire game. The O-line got beat the entire second half. Yet that bad coaching decision was the needle. Uh, I, we were had the momentum. We've scored two series in a row, I believe, up by 11. I just think it... I, I said this, and I'm going to keep saying it. We're a mentally weak team. When bad things happen, we fall apart. And I think we just... We were getting beat up physically. Physicality was the worst problem Nebraska had in that game. 
And it's going to plague us throughout the season, which is why I don't really see us at this point winning, I don't know, more than two games against the FCS teams we're up against next. It's not going to be pleasant. Maybe some freaking magic will fall down from the sky and change that, but I don't see it. I was surprised when I made the video that I there weren't more people pushing back that were supporting Frost. Now that the, a few days has gone by, the confirmation bias is setting in heavily where people are like, well, it's only one game. And somehow comparing things to Tom Osborne's career where he didn't win championships. <laughs> comparing Scott Frost to Tom Osborne is just an insult to Tom Osborne. It really is. And you should knock that off or stop being delusional or, I don't know, stop being insulting to Tom Osborne. My God. Uh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Oh, Slothic said, I remember you shit-talking Iowa saying, I'd rather be us than you because of your will to try to win. Yeah, I'd still rather be us than Iowa because I think that Scott Frost will be fired soon. We will try to find a coach who wins championships. And I look at Iowa and, listen, I wouldn't bag on you guys if you didn't care. I mean, nobody makes fun of Northwestern because they don't have any fans that care. What? what there's no fun in that. But when you look at Iowa, you at least have some fans some care. And... And there are a lot of you who know this that I'm going to say next. You have Kirk Ferentz and his son as your offensive coordinator, and your offense sucks. Even though a guy who's been the coach, what, the longest tenured coach in FPS, continually can't find anything more than, like, I don't know, if you had a really good quarterback one time, what would you do with him? Waste his time? I mean, it's just... They don't strive to win championships. And the reason why I'm going to continue to make fun of Iowa, even though we suck rocks, is because they, you don't have any trophies in your trophy case. And it's until that changes, which I you have a perfect opportunity to do it. I'm going to bag on Iowa, so screw you guys. Uh, let's see. Uh, what happened to Gabe Irvin Jr. and Ramir Johnson? That's a good question. I think they said they were trying to work them into the offense more. I don't know. This coaching staff, the personnel decisions they make, just I don't understand the personnel decisions they make other than somebody, well, we'll leave that alone. I'm not saying that part. Uh, to be fair to Frost, Northwestern kept using that run-up-the-middle trick play. They did. It was tricky. Apparently, it was never, they ran plays that their defense wasn't prepared for and had never seen before in practice. <laughs> We're going to do this show. You know, Haas will talk about these things. And they ran, they ran counters and they ran like zone plays. I mean, they ran one of the most basic plays in football against us. And we didn't stop them. Again, because we weren't physical. There was no real trickery there, unless I unless our entire coaching staff is full of idiots, and I don't think they really are. I think there's one idiot, and he's kind of infecting everybody else, kind of like a pandemic of dumbness. <sighs> the Huskers, Curtis Kiddo says the Huskers got another Martinez at quarterback. I don't think so. I think Casey Martin played fairly well. I think he did. I think the whole team kind of drifted downward. You know, well, after the onside kick, but certainly as the game went on and people will go, well, they don't know how to win. They know how to lose. Again, I think it goes back to weak, to the weak mentality thing. And I get that from, you know, earlier or during the pandemic, I did interviews with Yoshi, Jamarcus Hardrick, who plays in the CFL now and has won the Grey Cup with the Blue Bombers, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But he, I asked him specifically about, you know, what was this problem? How do you have a weak mentality as a team? And he talked about having players who pull people together and just kind of have refused to lose mental, mental attitude. And, and Nebraska doesn't have them, uh, doesn't have that. And another guy, I think one of the other commenters said, how can you blame the players for that? Or No, this was in our live show Monday night. How can you blame the players for that? Uh, when you have a coach who pulls the rug out from under him all the time. And I think that's a very good point. Um, John L. says, remember 1995 to 1998 when Nebraska ran the score up on U uh, Oklahoma almost maliciously. That was, yeah, that was terrible. I really just felt bad about that because, you know, I, I, I don't hate Oklahoma. 
Um, it's fun to hate on them. The sports hate thing, but you know they, they've they've maintained their level. What you know what what they did was they they went through some shitty coaching and they were terrible. What did we score seventy three points on them one time? That's just awful. And you know John Blake, Howard Schnellenberger, the second time around, just not good coaches. Uh, I can't remember the other guy that looked like a used car salesman. I think after that he went and sold cars for a living or something. But they went through that period, and then they hired decent coaching, and then, bam, they're back to being Oklahoma. And there's no reason why Nebraska can't do that, despite all these naysayers going, you'll never be good again, whatever, you trolls, sons of bitches. Uh, here is it. Alien Space said... Northwestern had over 500 plus yards. Holy crap, that rush defense and pass defense was awful. It was. Scott Frost should be called Scott Lost. They are going to lose a lot of games. And I thought about doing a t shirt that says uh, Scott Frost, more like Scott Lost, because uh, I think I came up with that in the fall. But I haven't done any t shirt stuff. Maybe I should. It just seems like it's pouring salt on an open wound or vinegar on an open wound or you know back in the old days when you had metal fillings chewing on aluminum foil that would light your mouth up in pain or some weird bizarre that's an odd reference isn't it i uh, i put in my notes nobody asked about bad tackling nebraska had a really they just tackled horribly for a while and that is because and i don't know this firsthand but and keep in mind nebraska's media didn't see hardly any practices so they were going by what the coaching staff was telling them but normally when you have that bad of tackling it's because you're not tackling in practice you have to prepare for the season um, let's see anything else i don't think so but i did want to thank everybody for commenting um, I'll try to do, you know, comments to the reaction to the reaction videos more often. I appreciate you supporting my channel. Please subscribe. Uh, one last thing is, I guess, I, I don't know. I don't really expect anything out of this season. I think we still have the same problems that we had, we've had under Frost. I just, you know, it's why I said he should have been fired last year, but we still have him. And for it's it's just a shame that I mean Nebraska is honestly we waited for months for this and it looks like the season's kind of over before it even started for everybody and that sucks because this is something we all love right <laughs> John Johnston Coronation thank you for watching and go big red.